Welcome to the Kitchen Army, the episode number three. Hello, Jeremy. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Very good, man. Very good. <laughs> so, first of all, uh, you've opened Ikoi pretty recently. Um, how is it going so far and also how does it feel to do things on your own terms? Um, it's going pretty well. Yeah. Uh, it's going well in terms of reviews and happy customers, but in terms of uh, a business, it could always be better, could always be uh, busier. Yeah, um, of course. And we still need to uh, get the message out to more people yeah. about yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. How but long has it been? How long have you been open? Four months. For four months? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The food is great. I can tell you guys, we tried some few dishes today. Why you tried it? We tried um, turkey oyster and we tried, uh, what was the uh, cow, uh, foot. cow food? Exceptional. Um, now, obviously, you're having to deal with multiple uh, skills. So, how do you balance between creativity? passion for food and cooking mm -hmm. and running, running the restaurant business. and which part ah. of running the restaurant is more ch most challenging for you? So there's two very polar opposites of the brain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think when one is like in control and like fully active, the other one just completely goes to waste. So usually... That's how I feel, man. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Tell me about it. Tell me. So it'll usually be like two weeks of intense focus just on uh, creating things and a lot of pressure will be placed onto that and then Ire who's my partner business partner can you know supports and he, he handles a lot of the operations and right. business so right and then when the menu is in a really really good place then take a step back and then change my focus onto um, costing you know, admin costing staff, admin people staff, management everything yeah okay. organization okay cleaning okay. everything yeah so 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 so, it's so basically it's kind of a back and forth yeah, yeah. so being a creative a creation is your stro strongest point I, I imagine yeah I, I but I like both as well I like the organizational side as well yes. I like um, yes. you know yes. getting the site you know hunting for the space and um, Sure. Pushing the marketing and the PR. Yeah, That's yeah. it's all exciting. I'm involved in all that for as yourself. well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's a very different way of thinking. Um, you got yeah. no one really to, to, to like fully back you up. But no, but I like that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It gives you the buzz. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and now uh, your career has been changed completely. So you've worked in the renewable energies. You studied history of languages, philosophy. Now you're running a restaurant. I'd like to you to uh, give a best tip for someone who's stuck at their job, want to move on, they're unsure what to do to be fulfilled in life. Um, I think I would only recommend leaving that job if you had a very strong passion and clear idea of what you wanted to do. Right. I guess the reality of leaving a good job to pursue something else um, works when you have a, an exit plan. But yes. Without an exit plan, it can be exactly. quite struggling. And yes. speaking from some experience, when I left my job, I that started, was around yeah, six years ago. Yeah, I was working, um, doing internships and working for much less money than I had in my previous job, yeah. and had to make a lot of lifestyle adjustments and you know to completely change my lifestyle in order to follow what it was I wanted to do yeah. with no, um, with no uh, sign of any kind of success or opportunity. Because you, you didn't know. You didn't know what I knew happen. I wanted to cook, but I no, nothing was handed to me you at knew, all. You knew that like that's nothing. the direction, but yeah. you were unsure. And there's a, so I guess you have to be prepared. My advice is to be prepared for be, to be like swimming in an ocean of doubt and risk. Yes. Um, and also uh, be prepared to sacrifice your lifestyle and your um, things for that you're comfortable for three. because exactly yes and but that's the dark side the positive side is uh, if you are passionate about something and something makes you feel good go for it yeah man yeah. <laughs> I'm 100% with yeah. you on that and if you know that you, you, you've got passion you can, you've got the energy to do something just put a thousand percent into it and you'll be fine I think and you'll get there yeah. sooner or later this yeah. this I think, but 
I don't know if that's the right advice to give to everyone because everyone's different. Some people have, some people are very focused. Yeah. Some people have passion, but they may not have the discipline or the focus. So I'm not sure I would give that advice to everyone. I would give it to, to certain people who were bored in their jobs, but they had the ability to keep concentrated on that one thing. And find out what they want. No, yeah, because that, I, that, 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 that's, that's the trick. Yeah, but I wouldn't just say openly to everyone. Just because you're passionate about something, you should go for then it. Then leave everything yeah. and just go on. You should go for it if you have a clear plan and you know what you want to achieve and you are uh, organized and disciplined about getting there. Yeah, yeah. But get, you, just being passionate about... That's the key. Opening a clothing store it doesn't mean... It can be anything. It, yeah, you yeah. actually have to have the methodology behind it. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. And um, now, uh, um, I think you did internship at uh, dinner. You did I worked there, yeah. You worked there, you worked yeah. at uh, Hibiscus. Yeah. Not what not. did you learn from that? Um, I learned uh, a lot about what okay. can, like uh, traditional kitchen culture is like. Okay. About um, you know the structure, the power structure of the kitchen, um, how kitchens are organized, run. Right. Um, I learned. I pretty much memorized uh, every single recipe that I came across in all of those restaurants. You, you, and I, and I wrote everything down, down, writing yeah. them down as well. Yeah, yeah. To analyze and think about all the different processes. So that's how now you can come up with these crazy ideas. Yeah, I think the only way you can come up with a good idea is if through experience, but uh, I don't use those ideas. I just reflected upon them. Sure, sure, sure. But I, sure. I asked every single possible question imaginable while I was working there. Uh, I, I read that in, in, in interviews. For short periods of time. Yeah. I didn't work very long, it worked. But my first day, I just walked around the kitchen asking everyone yeah. why. Why, 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 that, how long, that, that why, the key. how long, you why? You must have been pretty annoying. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> yeah. Why? Someone with no experience coming into a kitchen with a notepad and a pen and paper asking why, why, day, why, why? Like, what was that? But why are you asking me? Why not? <laughs> what knowledge should be shared? So, yeah, but, yeah. And, and anyone who comes here, they sh I share everything. Like, don't share, don't, we don't have any secrets about recipes or suppliers or anything. I tell everyone every single detail of what we do here. Yeah. Yeah, there's no secret. I mean, yeah. in the end, if someone wants to work things out, they will anyway. So, yeah. um, at least someone can learn from you. Yeah. Um, now, your friend and your business partner, Ira Hassan Odukale, uh, you just mentioned that he's backing you up whilst you're having your creative times. <laughs> and what are the key skills that he's got that complement you, that make two of you an amazing team? Um, he's. Um very good uh, with people. He's very sensitive. Uh, I think we, he's, you know, he's the opposite side to me. I'm more like um, intense, focused on driving the creative aspect of the business forward. Yeah. Where he's yeah. got the people skills, um, management skills. Um, you know, he he's overseeing um, all of the back of house administration that makes okay. the restaurant. Exist, right, right. Which, so, so you can just go and, and do your, your no, no, no. But we, he, he's involved in everything. Like all, we do, we make all the decisions together. Um, sure, sure. And sure. Uh, you know, he's got a very good taste level um, for everything. So well, he helps I, you with, exactly. with menu development as well. Not so much in menu development, but I mean, all the all aspects of the restaurant we we, we sure. work on as a as a pair. We're, we come yeah. as a pair. Yeah. Yeah. Good but friends. We, he's got a few. We're good friends, great. but we're very different. And um, and Ira's got um, very very strong character, and he's uh, you know I think someone that he's he's a strong leader as well. So I think okay. those okay. are his qualities. Yeah. And you're perfect team together. Uh, no, we can always be better. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> now, um, uh, tricky question. I pretty much know what you're gonna say, but is there an offer? that you wouldn't refuse when it comes to being employed again? Um, um, I think so long as I have, I mean, it'd be pretty hard because, I mean, the only, the only offer that would, would um, I mean, I think here I've got, I've got a great situation here, so it'd be hard to, to beat it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you gotta come up with something serious. Yeah, I've got a great thing going here because yeah. I've got such an amazing team. Yeah. I love yeah. everyone that I work yeah. with, yeah. and I can pretty much 
basically this restaurant allows me to be to be like totally like um, in complete control over I can do whatever the hell I want and it makes people feel good so of course. it's the only place in the world where I can be a complete psychopathic control freak and good can come from come of it you are a good control freak <laughs> yeah, a little bit <laughs> All right. so I think that's why it would be hard to beat this place because there's a positive outcome from a from everything that's personality that, 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 yeah. that, that, that's real yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's a positive Amazing. outcome which is blowing people away with an experience making people happy um, giving people something they've never tried before getting people excited and like kind of uh, inspired by something different to create that experience via a release of like intense like internal energy is quite hard to beat so the yeah, so you if it's overwhelmed with, with everything going on but it's yeah. just the way you want it yeah. yeah so it'd be hard to have a better offer than that i think the i wouldn't want to say there's anything better because i'd be letting my team down and betraying <laughs> them so there's nothing I, I, i can think of this guy seems seems to be really really kind and sweet and and, and just just very knowledgeable very so yeah amazing you got great so thing. lucky yeah <laughs> and <laughs> now in terms of west african cuisine because you cooked a few things for us yeah um what is west african cuisine about what what what, what is so characteristic about it i mean the first word that comes to mind is pungent pungent yeah pungent and pungent like with a strong smell you know it's, it's a right. cuisine that like has a you know, like big cow aroma. Food, yeah, cow food was pretty, pretty tense. Yeah, it's intense. It's an intense uh, cuisine, but it's it's very um, it's complex. It's broad. It has many historical, cultural factors that make it difficult to actually understand what indigenous West African cuisine is, or is okay. it? You know, what is West African cuisine? Is it cuisine that's been influenced by empire, by colony, by trade, or is it? you know the indigenous dishes um that have come directly from ingredients native to that land it's you know to me it's it's ambiguous sure so i like that about west african cuisine and that it's like connects to many parts of the globe because of history because of you know globalization because of um yeah. economies trade it's it's a, it's a region that represents what is the naturally occurring phenomenon of countries and I, I, and the food is the same and um, is there is is there such such thing as uh, is there such thing as tomato sauce that apparently they, they, they use tomato sauce that apparently there's a lot Africans, of stew yeah they use Africans a stew use yeah. as a base for the meat dishes so yeah, kind yeah. of okay so yeah that answer is more abstract i think specifically what is west african i think it's yeah, it's a lot of stews a lot of um um spicy rich broths um uh heavy starches so okay. there's a lot of um ground pounded grains and and yams that formed into kind of thick um okay. starchy um balls which are used to dip into really rich uh tasty salty stews okay um they have a lot of fermented um seeds and nuts um I love these kinds and of things. so a lot of dried fish a lot of uh salty smoked fish, fish um, a lot of goat mutton right beef again in a stew yeah. mainly there's so many influences yeah. in west african oh, course, food that you can course. you see in in the cuisine from other parts of the african continent uh -huh. but also um nordic influences okay. for instance the dried fermented fish that's hung and left to, to cure in the, in in the out, in the outdoors is very similar to um Japanese, I think that do some yeah and and the nordics the nordics do um mm. um fermented fish like the icelandic norwegian um cured herrings that are and cods so, you know the ones that are left out to uh dry and ferment in the sun they have those in in west africa as well so i'm wondering I never tried it is it is it super it's very intense but it's very good for seasoning broths okay. it's very um So it's fascinating. You've all these different links to other parts of the globe. So I can see. I can see. Yeah. So for me, it's uh, 
it's it's unsolved. I think. Yeah. I, I, I understand because <laughs> maybe your answer now. There's no one is, answer, really. It's yeah, a, it's, I understand. And and um, if you were to now combine your Canadian Chinese <laughs> roots, family cooking with with West African cuisine, and then also putting it all together to adapt to the London's market. How do you mix those cultures, your family cooking with West African cooking with London's market? Well, and I don't think of it. As, you don't think of it? As uh, any, I don't put a culture or a geography or a region right. on my cooking. Okay. I do it for uh, journalism. I do it for people, customers that want to know like, what the inspiration is, I say, oh, it's West African inspired because most of the time people want an answer. They want to know like, oh, so is this dish a traditional West African dish? It's not. Nothing on the menu exists anywhere on the planet. It's all, right. it's just, it's totally from inside. Yeah. So it's, it's almost inexplicable, the, okay. the origin of why the cow foot looks the way it does. It looks the way it does because it just came from the imagination. It was just that's a, how you imagined it? How, that's yeah, how you it wanted just it? feeling. That's how you and it. It could come from anything. It could come from the texture of some leaves uh, in a park and you see the leaf and you think, oh, that's a cool texture. Let's make a dish that has that texture. What yeah. relationship does that have to anything? Nothing. It's just personal. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, but it, just, just your own. Yeah, it's just a feeling, you know. But I guess the reason why, you know, there is a West African connection, but in another sense is that a lot of our products are from the region, so right. we, we do include, you know, many several products of West African origin on every single spices, dish. spices, vegetables, vegetables. fruits. Um, but we may not use a West African vegetable. We may use a Brazilian vegetable or a Italian vegetable. Equivalent. Equivalent. Yeah. That's not the same, but yields the same texture or result. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just. So what's so interesting is we'll look at. The West African region, and we'll look at the way they cook and in combination of dishes. Yeah. Maybe it's just a color, like the color of one dish, and then we'll say we're going to make a dish based on that. Um, but the number one priority is that it has to be delicious. So that's how we make it. Um, that's the key. That's how we make it fit into London. Is that we try to work in the context of um, like universal deliciousness. You know what I mean? Like you're trying your dishes with the whole team as you yeah, did exactly, today. So, exactly. so everyone has their input yeah. and in five people say, wow, you're yeah, yeah, putting yeah. that on the menu. No, but we really don't want to put something on the menu just because it's a peppercorn that no one's ever tried before. If it's <coughs> not good, it won't go on the menu. If it's yeah, not, yeah. if people don't respond well to it, it won't go on the menu. It needs to be 100% certainty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, everything goes through quite a rigorous process. Yeah. And just openness, I, I, I can I can tell it just helps the process. Because if you get five people helping you out to make decision, mm -hmm. just make it makes it easy. Um, probably this interview, I'm hoping, is watched by a few chefs. Why do you think they should come and work with you? Um, I think. Uh, well, we've got a nice working environment in our kitchen. Yeah. Whatever level you are, however much experience you are, it's a complete meritocracy. No one's, no one's. Um, obviously, it, everything that we do is based on having an open mind. Yeah. Um, not making the same mistake over and over again. Exactly. Um, being positive, and and you know, um, learning from from mistakes. So, That's the it's key. a very meritocratic environment. If someone comes in with 10 years cooking experience from a traditional cooking background and someone else comes in with no kitchen experience, I judge them at the same level. I mean, obviously I know that there are certain things that the experienced cook can do of that course. the other one can't. Yeah. But in terms of potential, I always judge people, always keep people, I don't judge anyone, I keep everyone on the same level. Yeah. So I believe that anyone can cook. It doesn't take, I think if people have put are smart and they put their mind to it and they're good at following instructions, they can cook. I, I think you've, you've said in, in one of the interviews that you believe that to actually build your own restaurant, you don't need the years of experience. And I, th I thought it was brilliant because 
in fact, if there's a passion, if you know what you want to achieve, exactly, I think you'll it's find the ways to get people to help you. Yeah, but I think it's a good place to work because the sky is the limit. I, I, I want Amazing. I, I want anyone who comes to work here. Yeah. I don't want them to be stuck in one stupid job for yeah. ten years or for a, a year. Yeah. If, if, if anyone shows initiative or like ability, I want them to overtake me. I want, I want people to be like incredible. So then you can go and build, build, build that other restaurant. Not even that. I'd want them to be better than me so that you can learn from them. Yeah, and that we challenge. I like the idea of challenge. I like yeah. the idea of people challenging me in my own work environment. Yeah. I like the idea of people challenging my ideas. You know, it's healthy. Um, and that's and, how you grow. And honestly, I think that anyone who is able to eat and put food in their mouth has a, should have an opinion on whether something is delicious or not. So regardless if someone's had 10 years cooking experience or not, I still think it's good to have chefs with um, good palates. And so yes, yes. May ha they may have the right experience, but they may not know what works. And, and experience may, might be technical, they may not be very creative, etc. Exactly. So, so, but I mean, of course we love having chefs with great experience as well, but what I'm try bottom line I'm trying to say is, of course. it's, um, yeah, sky's the limit, it's a meritocratic open environment where, yeah. Yeah. If you guys heard what, what uh, Jeremy said, come and give it a try. If he's got any spaces in his <laughs> kitchen, he's a great guy. The food is amazing, the team is great as far as I've seen uh, today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. <laughs>